Welcome to completing a Stuart triple expansion engine, this one's part 17. An alternative method of holding the centre eccentric sheaves in place and making a new stud for the damaged column. Time to sort out the bits. I'll move the cylinders out of the way first, and now the cylinder covers, followed by the slide valve parts. I require a bit of space to work, and my workbench as usual is getting very messy. The first part of this episode covers making new fixings to hold these split eccentrics in place on the crankshaft. These split eccentric sheaves are clamped to the crankshaft using two small 7BA machine screws. I think that 7BA is a little bit small for this job. Here's the complete assembly, two split eccentric sheaves and the two small bolts in the middle. They do hold the eccentric sheave tightly to the crankshaft, but if ever they were to rust in place they would be very difficult to remove and probably shear off. My plan is to use two 6BA Allen caphead bolts. These bolts will be much stronger, but the problem is the heads are too big to fit into the holes in the eccentric sheaves. Over now to the lathe to rectify that, I'm just removing a very small amount of metal from the heads of the bolts. As I'm holding the bolts by the threads, I'm only taking a fine cut, but luckily that's all I need to do. Take a very fine cut. Here's the other one. This needs to be a snug fit in the hole in the eccentric sheave, not a rattle fit. Besides, if I remove too much metal from the head, it will weaken the part where the allen key fits into the bolt. But I'm only removing a couple of thou, so it should be fine. Before I go any further, it's time to try the bolts in the eccentric sheaves, and as you can see, they're not a tight fit or a slack fit, they're about right. Now the bolt heads fit in the holes, I can carry on with the next part. Rethreading the existing holes in the eccentric sheaves, 6BA, they're currently 7BA. If you're doing a job like this, threading 7BA holes with a 6BA tap, be aware that the tapping size hole in the sheave, which rightly or wrongly goes all the way through to the other edge, is far too small for 6BA, as it's a tapping size hole for 7BA, and if you put too much pressure on the tap, it will snap off in the eccentric, and the only way to get out of that is to make a new one, and I really don't fancy doing that. As soon as I could feel quite a lot of resistance on the tap, I stopped the job and wound the tap out of the work. Now it's over to the drilling machine, and the next part of the job is to drill the clearance holes for the bolts. And if you're doing this job, do not get confused and drill clearance size through the threaded hole. It's a stupid thing to do, but it's easily done. Here are the modified Allen bolts, and I've shortened them. In this clip, I'm threading the other 7BA hole, 6BA, just like I did with the first half. I did both of them, because this time I'm using a plug tap to get to the bottom of the hole, but not all the way through as I've just mentioned, because that would snap the tap off. In this clip, you can see on the eccentric sheaves that are made from cast iron, some blow holes on one side. This in actual fact is doing me a favour, because it immediately tells me which way round the eccentric sheaves are, because don't forget, the eccentrics are not all the same. On the high pressure cylinder there's a 30 degree offset, and on the centre cylinder and the low pressure cylinder is a 15 degree offset. And all of the offsets need to be in the same direction. All I have to remember now is that the marks on the eccentric sheaves go up against the bearing, and that way the orientation will be correct. Here are the two original slot headed machine screws, and I've shortened the Allen cap head bolts to be exactly the same as the machine screws. Time to make sure everything fits, and it does. With both of the Allen cap head bolts fitted, the gap is fully closed. Time, I think, to fit it on the crankshaft. The engineering needs to be quite good to make sure that these two eccentric sheaves firmly clamp to the crankshaft. If they move at all, then the timing will be lost. I'm much happier using these Allen caphead bolts to hold the assembly in position. As I mentioned earlier, I really felt that the 7BA slot-headed machine screws were too weak. And here you can see them fitted to the crankshaft, and they really are tight. The only way these eccentric sheaves are going to move now is if I slacken off the Allen bolts. It's time now to remove the columns, very carefully and gently tapping them out with a piece of wood. I'm using the smallest hammer that I have. I could actually just use another piece of wood because they're not that tight. And now I can lift all four columns, complete with the motion bracket, away from the sole plate. Time now for the other side. You may be thinking, why am I removing all the columns? Well, to continue with the job, I've reached a stage where some of the parts need painting. 
But what I'm going to do first is repair the repair that I made in a previous episode. The centre drilling of the bottom of the columns is a bit on the big side and it makes the threads in this area very weak. I temporarily repaired this column by fitting a long 4BA bolt into a threaded hole with Loctite 603. But it didn't look good and it was still too short, so I'm going to remove it. And because I fitted the bolt using some Loctite 603, it's going to be difficult to remove without using heat. I'm using my small Proxon blowtorch and it's really handy because it has a stand on it so it sits upright, I don't have to hold it all the time. And I'm heating the part to break the seal between the Loctite and the metal. The parts don't need to be heated to red, in fact even this is a bit too high temperature. With my scriber through the hole in the centre of the column, to give me some leverage, I simply unscrew the column from the bolt which I'm holding in the jaws of a pair of pliers. Here's the part I modified sat next to the other three columns. You can clearly see that the size of the centre hole is a bit on the big side. The one on the left hand side of the picture is shorter than the others and I think this has been done on purpose and this is so that the fitting clears the hole in the box bed. According to my steel rule, I need to make a stud that is 7 eighths of an inch long, threaded at both ends, and within the 7 eighths of an inch dimension, one of the threads will be shorter than the other. The diameter of the shaft that fits into the sole plate is 5 30 seconds of an inch, so I had a look in my box of 5 30 seconds of an inch round bar, and I found this. Over now to the lathe, I've reduced the diameter very slightly, squirted it with WD-40 and now I'm threading it 4BA. Using my homemade quick change tailstock threading adapter. Here I'm threading the part that's going to screw into the column itself. And this thread is much shorter than the one I'm going to cut on the other end. I didn't need to use any Loctite 603 on this part of the job, as the 4BA thread runs up to a shoulder. I fitted the column to the thread just by using my scriber through the centre hole I didn't show the threading of the other end, it's identical to what you've just seen, but a bit longer. The threads are longer on the two studs in the centre than they are on the outer edges. And this is because, as I previously mentioned, there are some holes in the box bed that the engine sits on, and this is for clearance reasons. And that's it for this episode, some very small, but nevertheless very important jobs. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.